Signing day is approaching and some key recruitments are coming down to the wire. How is Texas fending off rival schools for current commits? Who is Texas trying to flip in the final days? And what's the strategy for the portal? Recruiting expert Justin Wells of Inside Texas stops by to keep us informed on the remaining names. Inside Texas is the place to go to stay current on all the recruiting tidbits dropped on the daily. So hurry up and subscribe to InsideTexas.com today. Link in the description. The class is pretty full, but let's see how the coaches plan to utilize those few remaining spots. Without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back, Justin. And first, we have some talented players in this class, so naturally other schools are going to try to flip them. So how are we doing at retaining the current committed guys? You know, Homer, it's been solid. You know, Arch Manning has, has been a real leader of this class in this cycle. He's done a tremendous job being engaged with these players because he's not just recruiting, you know, running backs, receivers, o linemen. He, he's looking for the whole the whole board. He, he knows that th they need defense on this as well. With any season, the ups and the downs, you might lose a couple recruits. And in this cycle, you can tell Texas has lost a couple, Jonah Wilson, Jamal Johnson. But the core of this group, the, the dudes you don't want to lose, essentially, are all still in and, and look to be locked in and solid. Uh, notably, guys like Malik Muhammad, you know, Leona LaFowle, he had a, a late push from Oregon and USC, but be able to keep those guys in. Cedric Baxter's probably the biggest name. The fact that he used to be a Florida State commit, the fact that he's visited there a few times since his pledge to Texas. Uh, but that's another one that, that he's as locked in as any recruit in this class. And so they've had some ups and downs this season, but I think the trajectory is still high. It's still, you know, it's still headed well. And, and I'd give Arch Manning and John Tay Cook and, and a lot of those guys credit. And we know the usual suspects we've been trying to get, the Anthony Hills of the world, the ones that fans have been following all season. But there's always some names that pop up later in the year. Are there any new names we should be on the lookout for? Yeah, there have been some new names. Then that's uh, the senior evaluations is basically what that is. And, and th this Texas staff does a great job of that. I'll tell you one guy, Tyler Scott out of Pebblebrook, uh, Georgia. He's a, a DB, can play corner, can play some nickel. Um, he's in the mix right now. He's scheduled to take an official visit to Texas in December. I know the Horns are, are, are looking at potentially adding one more DB to this cycle. Uh, they definitely want to take one in, in – the portal and so I think they're going to try to manage those numbers as well as they can Justin Benton's another one that it's looking at Texas he's looking at Arkansas and so at this stage there just aren't that many new names everyone's pretty much established because this class was locked in so early and and, and it was really it wasn't full but it was you know getting close to full you know a, a few months ago and so with the numbers being so small and, and the priorities that are still there, your Anthony Hill Jr., uh, you know, guys like that, Kyle Parker potentially uh, out of Lucas Lovejoy, with those guys on the radar, there's just not a lot of room to, to add new names. But if you need a couple guys that Texas is going to shoot a, a final shot at, I tell you Tyler Scott and uh, Justin Benton. And you mentioned Kyle Parker out of Lucas Lovejoy, a wide receiver. And that's an interesting group because at that position, we have a bunch of names we're trying to flip. So what's the update there? Right now, it seems like they want to bring in one more receiver for, from the high school ranks. Uh, and that spot is going to be – there's a handful of guys that, are, that, are, that they're looking at for that position. I'd say the first on the list is Kyle Parker, uh, the LSU commit out of Lucas Lovejoy. The staff absolutely loves him. Homer, they have, they, they've seen how well he's played this season. He has been absolutely dominant to a point where they're having to really engage and, and keep that relationship going because I feel like they, if they get him back on campus in December, they've got a great shot at flipping him. DeAndre Moore, the Louisville commit out of California, is another one they really like. They brought him in for an official visit recently. He loved his trip. Uh, George is pushing there as well, so that you have to be aware of that. Jaden Greathouse is a kid that they're going to recruit until he signs. They love Greathouse. Greathouse is a fit in this offense in the Jordan Whittington role. Uh, he can do a lot of things to get open, find so soft spots in the zone, and he's got tremendous hands and, and ultra productive. The Notre Dame commit is solid to the Fighting Irish right now, and that's a kid that – that would be the hard one to flip just because Great House is such a kid of integrity. I, I could see him sticking out just because he made that commitment. And so at the end of the day, it seems like the ones they're really eyeballing are, is that final wide, wide receiver position. Kobe Lane is another one they brought in uh, from, from Arizona. He's committed to USC. I don't see them flipping him. 
but they, they shot their shot with him. And, and so he's another one that could be on the radar. But right now, of the guys that are committed, it seems like that final wide receiver spot needs to be filled. And, and, and each guy they're looking at is, de- is pledged somewhere else. So the class is pretty close to capacity, and the remaining spots will be focused on the portal. What are the key positions we need to get filled? If, if you're looking at portal guys, you, well, you'll see more of those names come out at Inside Texas over the next few weeks. That's something you want to be cautious with. There's tampering and things of that sort. So you always want to be cognizant of, of, of kind of that. You know, it's a free agency, essentially, in college sports now. And so you always want to be particular. But I think what you'll see is a lot of movement on the defensive side. You know, there's eight or nine seniors in this group that that, that really played well this year. They might have played the, the, their ways onto an NFL roster. In, in 2023. And so I think you need at least one guy at each level on defense. I think they're they're going to look for an edge guy, uh, another edge guy to join uh, Colton Vosick and, and Ethan Burke and, and, and those guys that are uh, Dylan Spencer that are committed to the to 2023 class. You're looking at a linebacker to replace DeMarvion Overshone at the next level. That's a guy I think Jalen Ford's ascension has really helped and so you don't have to really look for an inside backer so much as as you need a guy that can do a little bit of everything like Overshone does. I think they'll they'll uh, they'll cast their net pretty wide for somebody of that sort. And then I can I can see them adding another safety. It, it really depends on how they finish up the recruiting cycle. I think the staff is kind of split. I think a few of them would like to bring in another high school kid. I think the other ones want to bring in a portal kid. I, I fully expect them to hit the portal and, and bring in another safety, whether it be boundary or field. I think that's going to be the, the main priorities for them. Another receiver on the offensive side would not hurt. If you do see some attrition, you, you definitely want to replace that. And so if that's the case, I could also see them bringing in a receiver or two. It's going to be interesting. The next few weeks leading up to National Signing Day are going to be a lot of fun. And and I think that's the coolest thing about, you know, being sure to check out Inside Texas because these names, these are coming in fast and furious. And things are going to be moving real quick once December comes and that portal uh, officially opens. Going to be fun, man. And then big picture, when it's all said and done, where does Texas finish in the recruiting rankings? That's a great question. They're going to be probably on the edge of that top five. It's really going to depend on how Notre Dame finishes, how LSU finishes. OU is kind of in the mix there as well. I think Texas finishes with another top five class. They're probably going to be number five. And and let's just say hypothetically they close with an Anthony Hill Jr. That might cement them with a top five class if they're able to land uh, the on three consensus five-star backer out of Denton Ryan. So right now, I think they're looking at another top five class. I mean, I think what they're seeing, last year they signed a top five group going five and seven. Their record, if you look at Sark's record so far, he's 12 and 11 at Texas. The first 11 games, he was four and seven. The last 12, he's been eight and four. So the trajectory and the vision and the culture have all meshed with exactly what Sark's message is. And so I think that is really going to solidify this group into another top five finish. I appreciate your updates as always, Justin. I learn a lot. Please tell the viewers where they can stay up to date on all the recruiting intel you're dropping daily. Hey, guys, come see us at InsideTexas.com. December is going to be crazy. Texas, we'll know what the bowl game is, the recruiting class. They'll have the early national signing day. The portal is going to open. It's going to be a daily smorgasbord of info and fun. Come join the community. Come see us. You can find me at Justin Wells 2024 on, on Twitter on Instagram at JustinWells24, but mainly just come see us at InsideTexas.com. We'd love to have you. And that's a wrap on Justin Wells. Make sure to subscribe at InsideTexas.com ASAP. Thanks for hanging out. Watch some more of my videos here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to support quality Texas content. As always, welcome.